Uh, so welcome everyone. My name is Derek Karner. I'm a program manager at the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts, which is running a um, residency program in partnership with the Potato Farm Project out in Long Island on the North Fork. And uh, today we're welcoming Rachel Gorchov, who was recently out there um, and will be speaking about the work that she made there. So please welcome Rachel. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm just gonna share my screen here and it sounds like there's some construction outside. So I apologize if you hear hammering. Um, so I'll start by sharing some work that I made when I was a, a freshman or actually I guess this, I was a senior at Tyler School of Art at Temple University. And I think most people here who are artists remember um, pre-internet, we had to keep image um, banks of our work, uh, for our work, for our studio, if we you know, needed images to reference. And this habit of collecting an image bank um, be became very uh, informative for my, my process. So this is some, you know, some examples on the far left of images that I collected at that time. And on the right, the sorts of works I was making from those images. So you know, taking details out of context, uh, du duplicating, um, forms using them as a as an armature to uh, on which to hang hang a painting or a drawing and oh, um and now i'm going to just briefly share with you some work that i made a couple years later when i was a graduate student at hunter college at the city university of new york um where collecting images from the map from mass media from print advertising um, catalogs that were sent to my home um, continued to be a part of my work. Uh, and I moved at this time away from kind of straightforward painting and drawing in favor of collage, blowing these, uh, these forms up, rephotographing them, obstructing them. Um, and this culminated in, in uh, my thesis exhibition, which you see in the lower left hand, lower right hand corner, a massive 40 foot collage. Um, this is a detail of uh, clothing, beds, homes, um, assortment of products from these advert uh, these ads and catalogs that would, um, you know, at that which at the time were so prevalent. I realize now that we so hardly get um, these sorts of clothing catalogs in the mail anymore. Uh, so now jumping ahead, I want to get to the work that I was making uh, most recently, um, but jumping ahead to a couple of years after graduate school, this would have been in about 2006, I went to Tyler, I graduated from Tyler School of Art in 1997, um, hunt, uh, sorry, started in 97, graduated in 2001, graduated from graduate school in 2006, this would have been in about 2008, I returned to painting. Um, after a while of not painting, painting on a rectangular flat canvas felt just very fraught to me, um, felt very, very much engaged in a history of painting that I really didn't want to engage in at that time. So I began making these uh, small sort of plaque-like forms with holes burrowed in them and protrusions um, on which I would paint miniature, uh, things that I would see in the backgrounds of these kind of catalogs and magazines that I, that I was collecting. And my source material uh, became a little cheaper, a little bit more niche. I was looking a lot of sort of municipal, um, municipal, uh, let's say picnic bench and bus shelter <laughs> catalogs, um, things that, images that ha had a lot of, uh, that weren't staged so much. You would see sort of random people in the background. And uh, these spaces sort of existed at, at some place, some place in time. Um, and uh, also setting up some, some background, this is maybe a couple years later. Um, I found that after a trip to the Philadelphia Museum of Art one day, uh, looking at decorative China, uh, decorative and commemorative China, uh, I found that the way image and landscape were framed in these, uh, on these plates were very similar 
to how I was framing these little vignettes in my paintings. And uh, thought I'd sort of explore this bit further by making my own plates. At this time, I was also teaching a landscape painting class at Tyler School of Art. I was living in South Philadelphia for a year where um, there were an ab abundance of very ordinary apartment complexes with these grand names, like the one we see here called Park Chase. Uh, so I was thinking about all of this while making my plates. I was, again, teaching this landscape painting class, thinking a lot about the traditions of depictions of the landscape, thinking about the panorama, uh, Hudson River School painters, these uh, traditions in the context of Western expansionism and uh, manifest destiny. Uh, at this time, I was also traveling a lot between uh, Philadelphia and New York to teach where I was, was living and <laughs> living and working in both places. Um, also, I was traveling by bus kind of uh, to Virginia a lot at that time. Uh, and look, spending a lot of time looking out the window, noticing these sorts of non-spaces that I saw along the sides of the highway where many people really spent their days, but I was just sort of passing through. So I would reproduce my trips on Google Maps. Google, I feel like Google Street View was relatively new at this time. This was probably about 2012, 2013. Uh, my forms became much more dimensional and I was thinking about how these forms could be a, a panorama of sorts. So a panorama is a painting, uh, a large painting in the round, which you would enter through um, a secret door or through the middle of the, the painting. Uh, and I was thinking about my, my objects as functioning as a panorama in which the viewer sort of en engulfs or encircles the, the painting itself, like we see here. So these are two views of one of the same painting. Um, this was my studio at that time. The green cone or sort of beak-like form uh, that you see on the far right was that, was an earlier stage of this painting. So that kind of gives you a, a sense of scale. Um, those of you in the Lehigh Valley might recognize this architecture, this is Martin Towers, the former Bethel and Steel headquarters. Um, and I think this is the beginning of a, a long and slow traje trajectory towards the work becoming a bit more, uh, I suppose, autobiographical and, and self, uh, looking within oneself to, to, uh, to mine for source material and subject. So I, I went to high school in uh, the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania which is where I cur currently work. And uh, at this time, this building, which is now torn, torn down, was long, long abandoned. And again, thinking about just the, the work I was doing with landscape painting, thinking about uh, theories of the picturesque, which you know, all, all of these 19th and 18th century landscape traditions, um, it, I don't know if they totally stand up over time, but you know, as I was kind of intrigued by this notion of the um, a romanticization of uh, derelict uh, architecture and land that, you know, where the uh, nature is sort of taking over. And, you know, Martin Towers in Bethlehem was kind of a perfect example of that. I, it appealed to me that I had a you know, pers personal relationship with this space. Um, and uh, let's see here. Okay. So, and also it made sense to me that rather than just looking at Google Maps screenshots, it was, it was important to vi visit these spaces because I had this sort of middle of the road, from the middle of the road uh, at a certain sort of distance relationship to my subjects. And it uh, made sense to me to get a little bit closer. So uh, this time visiting Martin Towers in Bethlehem uh, led, led to paintings such as this. Uh, and um, also led a little bit later to working in the landscape, which I'll, I'll get to shortly. But um, the, the work became larger. This gives you a little bit of sense of the, the process and how I build these, these forms or built these forms at the time. This was 
I believe 2013, 2014, um, where I developed this kind of paper clay material that uh, lives on a substrate of burlap, wire, chipboard and you know, insulation foam. This allowed me to get much larger in my, in, in scale. It's an installation of a, an exhibition I had at the time in 2014, it gives you a sense of scale. Some of these works you'd seen previously. And so many of these works drew on Martin Towers in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And uh, my Google Maps, <laughs> armchair traveling. Uh, and this very directly led to a residency that I, I did shortly after in Los Angeles, um, in which I spent most of my time, it was called a um, oh my gosh, I am forgetting the name of this residency. <laughs> uh, Eastside International, Eastside International in Los Angeles, um, where I exclusively spent my time in Los Angeles, uh, driving in and around the greater Los Angeles landscape, making drawings, holding a, a black convex mirror, which was, which is called a clawed glass. It was something that uh, travelers relied on in the 18th in 19th centuries, pre-photography, to observe this, the world around them. It made whatever they were looking at feel more sort of painterly. Um, because of the con convex nature of the clawed glass, it had this sort of uh, fish eye, it distortioned the images. Um, so it'd make drawings of the sort of non-spaces around the Los Angeles landscape, um, factories, parks, uh, nondescript housing subdivisions. And uh, I came home armed with several sketchbook sketchbooks full of drawings, making paintings that were sort of the inverse of a clawed glass, uh, con concave paintings. And you see, for, for instance, here down on the bottom, this is a form that I uh, have stuck with for quite some time. Um, again, thinking about a panoramic experience, uh, you know, you the viewer stand relatively close to the painting, it fills your peripheral vision, becoming a sort of immersive experience. So spending all this time um, traveling around the landscape, uh, whether it be lo you know, locally at Martin Towers or in Los Angeles or visiting family in the Southwest or um, visiting places such as Longwood, <laughs> Longwood Gardens in uh, uh, the greater Philadelphia area. Um, I found myself particularly interested in these uh, for forms such as clouds and shrubs with uh, cast shadows. T to me, signifying depth, three-dimensional depth in a, in a two-dimensional two space. Um, and so I, around this time, I'd started a residency at Hunter College in the ceramics area. Uh, this would have been about 2015, 2016, and began experimenting with making these forms that were sort of ambiguous forms that could be clouds, could be shrubs, could be rocks, and uh, playing, playing with creating cast shadows for them. Um, so this is an early experiment with ceramic forms, with cyan and blue light. Uh, the, that residency culminated in an exhibition in their project space at Hunter College. Uh, and this is the, I think my first attempt at thinking about the painting as a sculptural form with uh, an installation kind of element. So, I had this form that I made in the studio and painted this yellow kind of um, stripe coming from it that I think I think of as a sort of proto cast shadow. Um, but that very directly led to this work where, you know, after leaving the Hunter College ceramics area, I continued working with my 
paper, clay and burlap and wire uh, materials to build the, the armature for my paintings, making these forms that could be rocks, could be shrubs, uh, and making paintings along with them that were the cast shadow. And I really, I, the, making this work became very important for the ambiguity of what the form was and what the, the shape of the cast shadow was. You know, some people saw them as uh, tears in, in space, some saw them as cast shadows, some saw them as sort of reflecting pools. Uh, and so th these were made by painting on, painting on paper, scanning them at a high resolution and printing them on an adhesive backed uh, vinyl. And I found that simple, simple kind of trick to be so effective. Um, so this gives you a sense of scale. This was a two person exhibition I had with artist John Cowan at Simiavac Projects in Greenpoint. This would have been uh, 2016 or 2017. And I believe that summer I went to Europe for the first time in uh, since college where I visited Vienna and Paris and I think Brussels and really marveling at these vaulted domed, vaulted and domed ceilings in uh, cathedrals and state buildings. Uh, my, I was still on and off working at Hunter College making ceramics and thinking about reproducing these sorts of uh, ceilings in my work. And this gives you a little sense of the process I was using. So it's been very important to make drawings for me before making paintings as an act of translation. And while I'm not uh, working actively with the clawed glass, I'm thinking about the fisheye sort of skewing effect that happens in the clawed glass. So I was <laughs> setting up an image on an iPad, filtering it through a fisheye app on my phone making drawings from that, which, which would then result in a painting. And while these are ceramics, I, I call them paintings. And uh, this was my, I suppose, first solo show at Owen James Gallery. This would have been in 2017, which was all ceramics, all uh, paintings made in ceramic. So based on these ceilings in, Vienna, Paris, um, Belgium. And I believe 2018, I had the privilege of going to Vienna a second time. The first time I had been in Vienna, I happened upon an exhibition at the Jewish Museum uh, in which there was an exhibition reproducing the, I want to say 30 or 32 synagogues that once stood in the city, all of which, except for two, were destroyed uh, in two nights in 1938 during Kristallnacht. Uh, the second time I visited Vienna, I decided to set out and visit the locations of each of the 28 synagogues that once stood not really knowing what I wanted to do with, with this information, knowing there's an art, uh, you know, a project in there somewhere. Um, so the engraving you see in the middle is a, is a reproduction of, of one of the synagogues that once stood in the city. And, you know, it was essentially a pilgrimage to a, a, uh, several non spaces. I would visit an address like the one you see in the upper right and usually find some sort of ordinary residential building, shops, maybe an empty field. And I would have to now find something to document, find something to, that was interesting. So this became a, sort of, became a sort of scavenger hunt for me of looking for what was interesting in, in these sort of non-spaces. So this is an example of some of the uh, some of the things that I've documented, like these you know, strange kind of posts on the side of the street. Soon after coming back from Vienna, uh, a close family of my, a member of mine, my, my stepfather, became 
ill and spent the end of his life in a hospital in, in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. I'm spending a lot of time in this hospital also kind of you know thinking uh, taking a lot of pictures making drawings um looking for just again using the space as a as a place to kind of scavenge for interesting visual information um these are some of the photos that i took on the hospital grounds really not knowing what what i wanted to do with these 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 things um, then that summer, I believe it was summer 2018, I attended a residency at the Cooper Union in New York City. And it was there that I was able to start processing these, these images and thinking about the, uh, just you know, think, thinking about how this work can be auto, autobiographical or is autobiographical in a meaningful way, thinking about um, these uh, public sculptures that were on the the campus of the Lehigh Valley Hospital uh, that brought me a lot of, um, I suppose, solace while I was <laughs> spending time there, uh, thinking about these remains of these synagogues in, in Vienna, and actually I went to Berlin as well. Um, my family is Jewish, not from that particular region, but again, thinking about this sort of personal and collective uh, loss and um, this work that I made at Cooper Union. I, uh, was a pairing of images from Berlin and Vienna and pairing of um, things from the Lehigh Valley Hospital. Kind of having an, working with an internal logic of a, a form within a space. So building uh, the, just the, the smallest amount of detail that I could to inform, to create a sense of space, of a dimensional space within these paintings and then painting just the least amount, inf about amount of information I could to, to create the semblance of a, some sort of positive form within that negative space. And all of these were a pairing of, of oftentimes an interior of a synagogue in Europe with um, oftentimes a sculpture from the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital Sculpture Park. This gives you a sense of scale. Uh, I also began to get a bit larger with these concave paintings continuing to work with this idea of the cast shadow. This was at Cooper Union in 2018. Um, then in 2019, I got a full-time teaching job in the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania in Bethlehem at Northampton Community College, which <laughs> that first semester really con consumed, consumed my, uh, my life at the time. Uh, then that summer, 2019, I was armed with images of my students' work, um, you know, continuing to take photos of just things wherever I went. So on the lower left, you see an installation at the Isamu Noguchi Museum in Queens, New York. And on the upper right, uh, a cardboard chair that some students had made, drawings that I make translating the two and combining them into this painting. Um, another sort of student work on the lower, on the lower um, right. You know, you know, I think being a teacher has been so informative to my work. Uh, I often think of myself as making work kind of through the students, just in the this creative energy that I spend conceiving of projects, giving them feedback on their work. So you know, I think it only makes sense that, that their work then reciprocally enters, enters my work. So this gives, th these are some studio shots from that time. This was, I believe, summer 2019. I've built this large mold that allows me to make these larger paintings. Um, on the upper right, you see these uh, paintings on paper that ultimately become the cast shadows. On the lower right is an earlier version of um, this painting. And this led very directly into my, sol my last solo show at Owen James Gallery, which was meant to open March 2020, March 19th, 2020. So um, 
as all of us know, that obviously didn't, uh, didn't happen. <laughs> so we installed the show and that the show ended up being up for five months. Uh, eventually it did open, uh, but during this time, like all of us, I was at home uh, alone in spring 2020, connecting with friends and family and students and colleagues via Zoom. Um, at this point, I'd been relying so heavily on my sort of daily interactions with spaces and architecture and people to provide me with studio fodder. And at this point, really the only new visual information was with faces on a screen. So I started, I, I don't know, April, May, 2020, making drawings of screenshots from, from Zoom. So these are just examples of, of two of them on the upper uh, on the upper portion of the slide. I also began transcribing my dreams, um, making drawings from these dream transcriptions. Uh, so I'm gonna just touch briefly on this slide. Uh, I'll say that you know at this point in the, the early stages of the pandemic, my work really has, has taken a shift to, lo to looking at, uh, to, to being, I think, very outwardly, um, internally focused, very autobiographical. Um, I'm jumping ahead now to summer 2021, where I did a residency at Yaddo in Saratoga Springs, New York, um, where I was continuing to work with these idea of portraiture of, of friends and, and loved ones, both living and deceased. I was making large scale charcoal drawings and, and paintings where I'm continuing to think about what's the least amount of information I can um, give my viewer for, uh, for them to understand that this is someone. I often, for years now, I often think of my work as being this kind of hook on which you can hang your eyes where, while your thoughts can kind of go elsewhere a sort of visual hook. So this is a painting of my stepfather that I'd made last summer at Yaddo. So, you know, if I give my viewer just kind of enough, but not quite enough information, then there, that's the, sort of this puzzle for the mind to, for the mind to, um, to solve. So now jumping forward <laughs> to my time at the Potato Farm uh, EFA North Fork Residency to March, 2022. Um, I'm continuing to work with the with these paintings of friends and loved ones while at Yaddo or shortly after I conducted a series of zoom conversations with colleagues I had met there with the understanding that we were, I was going to then eventually make paintings from these uh, screenshots so I it, during my time at the P potato farm project I sat down and, and made these paintings of um, friends and colleagues I had met at Yaddo. So that's what the, the two are down at the bottom. I'll come back to the ink drawing shortly. This is a better view of one of them. I'll just uh, go through a few of them. So this is work made while at the potato farm. And you know, while, while I'm doing this, I've continued with these, with ink drawings that, uh, portrait ink drawings I had begun experimenting with at Yaddo. Um, these are very new. This is a studio shot from my studio from a very recently post potato farm, um, actually looking at the faces that appear on my, my social media feeds. Um, so this is, this is brand new. Thank you for, for looking at this new work, sharing it with me. And uh, that concludes my presentation. I look forward to hearing your, your questions and comments. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, yes, please ask any questions. If you're uncomfortable asking a question, you can put it in the chat and I will read it out.
And so I, I had kind of a technical question. I wasn't sure the materiality of your um, concave paintings, are those all ceramics or were those on paper, like cast paper? I'll share my screen again. So yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so they're both. So some of the smaller works, oh yeah, that's a good question actually, especially in this last show at Owen James Gallery, it's, it's both. So the smaller pieces, like you see over here on the, the left, it's ceramic with, uh, and it's, cera it's an acrylic painting on ceramic with the vinyl uh, cast shadow. And then these larger forms, um, like you see, you see my process here is actually a wire mesh. I use what's called hardware cloth. Sometimes I use, it, it, I found that I don't actually need to use burlap so much, but sometimes, especially in the closed forms, I'm also using burlap and it's this paper clay that uh, I began using way back in, um, I guess this would have been 2012. This is not from 2012, but that's when I began using it. So it's a mixture of paper pulp, archival, archival paper pulp, uh, linseed oil, um, trying to remember, uh, methyl cellulose, which I, I blend with a drill attachment that has kind of the consistency of wet tuna salad. And I spread it on my form as if I'm icing a cake and it becomes quite hard. And that, that allows me to get larger because obviously I couldn't, I couldn't get this large with ceramic or not easily at least. Um, I just came back from the potato farm and I'm sort of processing all the different impressions and experiences I had there. I'm wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit more about your experiences of being there and working there and, and being in that specific environment too, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I think you followed me, Lisa. Thanks for coming. Um, I, well, I think it, you know, I referenced a few residencies in my talk and I think residencies in general are just so important. Um, I think for, for both of us, the potato farm, well, at least for me, the potato farm was a spring break residency. So it was in the middle of a very busy semester. And at, at least in the last few years, I'm finding making art happens in these you know, very productive condon condensed spurts. So I really wasn't making much work before. Um, I was in the process of moving. Uh, and I think a residency is just this gift. It's this you know, time when making art is your primary responsibility. It's your full-time job. And, um, and so I think you know, residencies in general, including the potato farm, were tremendously productive for that reason. But I think the potato farm is interesting because it's, you know, so my last residency experience was Yaddo, where I was one of, I wanna say 25 artists, 25 or 30 artists. Potato Farm, I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 truthfully- did you, get to go, did you get to go on some of those amazing walks and just kind of observe yeah. through everything? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, but I went on lots of beach walks. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, the weather was maybe starting to warm up a little bit for you, but we had a couple of sleet storms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, forget about, you know, swimming or putting your feet in the water. But yeah, those beautiful rocky beaches on the um, north side and uh, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, I will say, like, I think in some ways it was, I, I told uh, Drew Van Bidehe, who run the residency, that, you know, it felt a little bit like the early stages in the pandemic in, in some ways. Like, I was, it was just like so much internal kind of thinking and processing. And um, I mean, I was finding myself going out to dinner most nights just to kind of, and sitting at the bar and trying to make conversation. <laughs> um, so, but it, yeah, it was really special, just yeah, really a gorgeous environment and um, this kind of dedicated time to make art is just such a gift. It looks like you're, it seems from this talk, your work sort of takes time to unfold itself within you. So perhaps we'll see something 
further down the road that the uh, the residency instigated. Yeah, you know, I was so um, so worried. I packed so much, so many slides in. I didn't want to go over, so I kind of rushed through a few, through a few things. But uh, I mentioned very briefly these dream transcript drawings I was I was making and hope to continue making. And I think that's one area that the potato farm um, helped kind of sow, sow a seed for whatever might happen next in that project. So uh, during lockdown, I began recording dreams first thing when I woke up in the morning. And, I, and that's something I've continued to do for these last two years on and off. So something I did at the potato farm was I caught up on transcribing these recordings which you know is very illuminating. So that's not work I can really share with you right now because it's just in kind of the idea generation um, sort of sketching stage. But you, you know, it's certainly very illuminating lis listening to these record listening to these recordings from mid twenty twenty till relatively recently. I haven't totally caught up, um, and certainly I'm thinking about new ways of of integrating, let's say, this ongoing photography that I've been doing and these portraits and then also these, these dreams. And, you know, I think that's something that I think a residency does for many artists is just provide that space to kind of think about what you're going to do next. Which, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think that's, <laughs> that's going to happen. Kind of Very interesting, I think, because I, and I enjoyed seeing how you were photographing using the, the skewed perspectives and whatnot. I'm, now I'm thinking that there must, I mean, the space in dreams is also skewed, right? And kind of twisted and whatnot. Maybe that maybe, maybe somehow those will come together. That could be really interesting, I think. That's crazy thinking. But so yeah. and how know, was it for you? How was the potato farm for, for you? <laughs> <laughs> it was isolated, like you said, um, but with a lot, lots and lots of walks and and um recording and being and absorbing um, everything. Um, so like I said, I'm still, I feel like I'm processing a lot of it. It's sort of layered in, in there and I'm working, thinking about it continuously. Yeah. So, yeah. But definitely, like you said, a huge, huge gift. A huge what was that? A gift, a, gift, yeah. a huge gift to get yeah. time and space and Rachel, have, have you ever considered working with um, collections in order to uh, further your, your examination of imagery and uh, histories? Because in some ways I, I see you happening upon imagery. Mm -hmm. Like I just wonder if you would ever like go and investigate a, a, an archive, let's say like, you know, like an archive of Jewish history to see mm -hmm. what, what images are there for you to pair with your experience. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, for I, I think that's something that I could absolutely could absolutely be a next step. Um, around graduate school for years, I was um, kind of stalking the image, the picture collection at the New York City Public Library, the New York Public Library, um, and using that archive a lot. And that archive really made sense for the work I was making at the time. Um, so for anyone who's unfamiliar with that archive, it's, I'm not even sure if it still exists, but uh, this department in the New York City Public Library was essentially just a massive picture collection and they would buy books just to tear them apart and then catalog the images and you know, have magazine su subscriptions just to tear them apart and catalog the images and you could, you could happen upon so many images that way. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that the the happening upon, as I think you, you had, that was the term you had used, is important to me that sort of being faced with um, a situation that may or may not directly relate to my work. And then wh what do I find in it? And, you know, for that reason, an archive could make, could make a lot of sense. Doesn't Philadelphia have an archive of, uh... Uh, textile patterns. I feel like you should go see that. <laughs> I forget it said one institution. Yeah, that's like, I feel like 
you mentioned that and that sounds familiar to me but i yeah i can't think of where it is either i think i used to follow them on instagram and okay. just be like wow look at all this uh, just because some of your painting work you didn't talk very for about the formalism but right. you have these sort of brush strokes that are very they're almost fabric like textile pattern well yeah thank you for mentioning that i think in my concern to not take up this entire hour. I really wasn't talking at all about the formal decisions. Um, so, you know, for many years I've, I've been teaching color theory and uh, color's ability to, to create a, a kind of, for lack of a better term, psych psychological space or um, a certain sort of, um, kind of field of associations has, has been you know, really important to me. So, you know, thinking about certain colors sort of receding or advancing or, you know, um, where something can feel sort of flat and deep at the same time has informed my interest in these cast shadows uh, against you know a highly dimensional form with a highly flat cast shadow, but and then thinking specifically about say in this one in particular the cast shadow, be not being a color that you would associate with a shadow, so being relatively light and chromatic, whereas the the form has these strong blacks or darks and you know wants to kind of recede, and so you know when you're faced with this in the space, you're it's it's kind of visually confusing and that confusion. Uh, I, I like how that confusion kind of hooks hooks the viewer, in my opinion. You're sort of sitting there trying to figure it out, maybe not even on a conscious level. And that, I, I think, allows you, your mind to kind of go someplace else, hopefully, while you're thinking, while you're looking at this. Mm -hmm. And pattern and, you know, textiles, yeah, I think can do that totally totally effectively. Well, I think it's very accomplished work and I hope to see it in person soon. So let us know uh, the next time you have a show in the area. Um, will do. If there's any more questions, otherwise I think we will say thank you, Rachel, and uh, end, the, end the talk today. Okay, great. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank, thank you. you, Rachel. For the great talk. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming and thanks Derek for organizing both the residency and the talk.